everybody, this is Ms. Claudia, and welcome to the video on blood circulation patterns. And uh, we can start by talking about all the different areas blood is pumped throughout your body, but I think we got to give props to um, this guy right here, because he's the one pumping that blood all over and in these different patterns. And so we're going to really focus on where that blood is traveling throughout the body. So this, this guy over here now looks like this. Um, basically, and this is very simplified schematic, but we have major arteries that leave the heart. And the one we're going to really focus on a lot is the aorta. The aorta is going to end up subdividing into many different other arteries, but eventually those arteries get so small that they um, then are classified as capillaries. It's abbreviated there. And capillaries is where that diffusion of nutrients and gases and waste can occur, where things can get dropped off at all of our body cells and things can get picked up. And those capillaries then will merge together into larger and larger veins and make their way back to the heart. And for that, we have the inferior vena cava and the superior vena cava. Now, let's break those down a little bit more so it's not so simplified for you. Here we go. Here's what I mean. This is a lot more detail, but take a look right in the middle. There's our heart. We have on the right side the, the right atrium and ventricle pumping to the lungs. We have the left side, the left atrium and left ventricle pumping all the way throughout your body. So if we just focus on the main organs right by our heart, which is our lungs, and you can see the pulmonary veins, we have two of them going to each lung. They subdivide into capillaries where oxygen and CO2 are exchanged, and then they merge back into veins. Oops, I'm going the wrong way. They merge back into veins and go back to the left side of the heart. So that's the first circulation pattern known as pulmonary circulation. So it's basically blood traveling to and from the lungs, from the heart. And what are we doing? We're picking up oxygen and dropping off CO2. Now, the other major circulation route then is what your left side of your heart does, which pumps to your entire body. And that's known as systemic circulation. And it's doing just the opposite of pulmonary. It's dropping off oxygen and picking up CO2 from those cells. Now, what we're going to do in the following slides here is really go in depth into systemic circulation. There's a lot of subdivisions of systemic circulation. Before we do that, I do want to just mention one that sometimes gets overlooked, and that's the circulation pattern that actually supplies the heart muscle itself with blood. A branch of the aorta comes off of the, that, that arch and then actually supplies blood to the heart, to the coronary vessels. And so we're delivering oxygen to the heart muscle itself. Okay, so I just want to mention that one. Now let's go back to systemic circulation. Here's the same picture I just showed you, but in much simpler detail. So we have our right side. And we have our left side. The four chambers. You can see here our aorta coming right over the left ventricle and immediately it branches to the upper and lower parts. Um, and we have our pulmonary circulation here with our lungs. But I want to focus on the circulation for our upper and lower extremities in our um, head and trunk here. So coming off of the main um, aorta here, there's, a, there's two major arteries, but I'm just going to mention one of those that's going to your head. And that's the carotid artery. To go up there, subdivide into many different arteries, and make its way back eventually to this should be the superior vena cava. But it'll again this diagram a little bit too simple, but oops, it'll make its way back go through to the vena cava via the jugular vein. And there's a few other arteries coming in and veins coming in um, from your arms. We're just going to focus on the head portion right there. If you go down below, for your legs, here's our descending aorta all the way along here. And that'll subdivide into an artery called the iliac artery, going to each leg. Um, 
and eventually it will make its way back up those legs to go back to the heart. And so then we're doing the deep iliac vein, which will go into the inferior vena cava. Yeah. Now what we're going to do is look at more so what happens in the trunk of our body and those systemic circulation pattern patterns, and specifically right here. And it gets a little tricky with this. This is known as hepatic portal circulation. Now let me just show you a regular circulation pattern first. So we have here a major um, artery and a major vein on one side. So let's label where they came from. So the aorta is our major artery, and that came from the left ventricle. And on the other side, our major chamber that all blood gets drained into from the vena cava is the right atrium. Now, as I've been saying before, um, all these this aorta gets subdivided into smaller and smaller branches, such as capillaries that you see here for exchange of goods through diffusion. And then those capillaries will then merge together to go back into a vena cava and to the heart. So that's normal circulation where you have one capillary bed. For hepatic portal circulation, you have two. So let me walk you through this. But I want to put on here the original starting and ending points. That hasn't changed. What has changed are, are the, the middle parts here. So let me label a couple of things. First of all, these are the capillaries that are going to be found in your liver. And then these are the capillaries that we found in your like intestines and supplying them with blood. So we're going to call them mesenteric arteries. So here's the deal. So here's our aorta. It subdivides. Well, these are mesenteric capillaries. This would be your mesenteric artery here. So, and um, basically what's going to happen here is they're going to pick up all these good nutrients from the foods that you eat in your intestines. They're going to be chock full of good stuff. And those mesenteric arteries are going to uh, kind of merge together into what's called the hepatic portal vein. That vein is only headed straight over to the liver because the liver wants to get those goods, those nutrients like glucose, because um, it can store a lot of that glucose um, so we don't, our blood sugar doesn't get so high. And let's see here, and the final thing, so the liver will, will filter all those things one second time, and it'll go back to regular circulation via the hepatic vein, not the hepatic portal vein. Now, if that wasn't enough, the liver actually gets another um, major blood vessel going to it. It isn't on this drawing, but we have the hepatic artery. That's going to supply the liver with oxygen and all those things. So the liver gets two um, sources of blood flowing through. Now, why does it do that? One, as I already mentioned, it helps to maintain blood sugar levels. It's receiving lots of glucose from the intestinal arteries, from the hepatic portal vein. And so this is a way to get, out of, get that out of the blood and store it in the liver. And the other thing it does is detox. Your liver is really good at breaking down alcohol that may be consumed, other drugs. And so before we go back to the heart, we try and get all those poisons out of there and detox it. And the liver does that. So we give it um, lots of blood so it can filter that blood and do its thing. So back to our drawing. You can see here, this was our hepatic artery. This is the hepatic portal vein. So we label there. This is just simply the hepatic vein, but they all go, in the end, they all get their, make their way back to the inferior vena cava. Okay, now let's do the kidneys um, circulation pattern, so we're almost at the end. The kidney circulation pattern is called renal circulation, and just like any other circulation pattern, it all starts in the aorta, and the aorta is going to subdivide into two renal arteries going to each kidney. And blood will go in, it'll get filtered in here, it'll be um, able to get removed of all the waste that our cells produce. And then once it's all filtered and clean, blood will then exit those kidneys through the, the renal veins and go back to the inferior vena cava to the heart. So that's renal circulation. 
and make the label those out here. We have the renal arteries, the renal vein, and the inferior vena cava. And before I wrap things up, I do want to bring your attention to fetal circulation. So this is a little bit different because um, babies kind of have to get goods and drop off waste through through the mom and through the placenta. So if this is like our umbilical cord here, our, our um, belly button, and then our umbilical cord, this would be the, the placenta that it's attached to, and that's in mom. So we can see there's two different uh, blood vessels that develop out of the placenta. And the first is the umbilical arteries. Okay, those are going from baby to mom. So those are going to carry a lot of waste that the baby produces, and the mom's going to take that and filter that blood and clean it out for the baby. Then you have the umbilical veins, which are just the opposite. Those are from mom to baby. So those are going to go back up here to the heart. And that's going to be blood that's really good for the baby. It's going to have lots of oxygen in it, and it's going to have lots of nutrients for that baby to grow and, and to use. So let's look at fetal circulation to and from the placenta. And after all that, I think we are finished. So thanks for listening, and I hope that was helpful for you.